Greetings, Japan fans. Today's show, we're going to be talking about habits. Maishu, arigato gozaimasu. And welcome back to the 11th year of the Leadership Japan series. I'm your host in Tokyo, Dr. Greg Story, Dale Kanye, Tokyo franchise owner, president of Dale Kanye, Tokyo Training, and the three-time best-selling author of Japan Sales Mastery, which is Zaegyo in Japanese, Japan Business Mastery, and Japan Presentations Mastery, or in Japanese, Anata mo Present no Tachiden. My other books include Stop Wasting Money on Training, which in Japanese is Training de Okani o Mudni Sunre wa Yamimasho. And my just released new book is Japan Leadership Mastery, and all are available on Amazon. This podcast brings insights, examples, and experience about leading in Japan. Trust me, it is different here. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast with your family, friends, and colleagues. We're not being sponsored by Libsyn. But we value your privacy, which is why we have our podcast hosted by Lipsyn. Unlike many other hosting organizations, Lipsyn have a strict policy that does not allow access to your private information by anyone. Here is our daily podcast lineup on Apple Podcasts. Mondays, the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show podcast. Tuesday, the Presentation Japan series. Every second Tuesday, the Business Touches You Know or Share show. Wednesdays, the Sales Japan series. Thursdays, the Leadership Japan series, and every second Thursday, the Business Pro Podcaster Show. Fridays, the Japan Business Mastery Show podcast. Saturdays, Japan's top business interviews. Before we get going, today's handy Japanese phrase is Okaire nasai, Okaire nasai, Okaire nasai, welcome home. Okaire nasai, Okaire nasai, Okaire nasai. So when you've been at work or you've been out or you come home, your family members will say to you, Okaire nasai, Okaire nasai, Okaire nasai, welcome back, welcome home. Today we're talking about breaking leader bad habits, the struggles of health, fitness and stress we all face. Are you sitting too much and for too long at your desk every day? Are you eating too much every meal because your mother told you when you were a kid to finish everything on your plate? Are you hitting the booze after work with your mates or at home to rid yourself of your stress? Are your kidneys and liver in good shape? Are you carrying around too much meat and making your muscles and organs work much harder than they should? Is your blood pressure elevated and too high every day? Are you constantly thinking about all your troubles at work? Are you having trouble getting good quality, consistent sleep? Are you promising yourself to get to the gym, but don't make it as often as you need to in order to make any progress? Well, I have pretty much described myself here. Knowing about it, doing something to fix it, are two universes separated by infinite space. Intellectually, I know what I should do, but practically, I struggle with a lifetime of negative habits which all need work. I do a lot of pontificating in my content about what to do and how to do it, so I can imagine I can come across as Mr. Goody Two Shoes Pseudo Perfect. This time, I will use myself and my failings as the mirror for you to think about yourself and what you are doing if you share these same attributes. Ironically, I've been sitting in my home desk writing my weekly blogs for the last three hours and I haven't once stood up. I know, just sitting is bad, but I get into a concentration zone and I forget to stand up. Right, I'm going to use a timer with an alarm and set it so that I stop what I'm doing and stand up and walk around at set intervals, a bit like the Pomodoro method of 25 minutes work, five minute break, then after four Pomodoros, take a 15 minute break. Eating less is a choice. Leaving parts of the meal unconsumed is a choice. Another irony. I'm sitting here in Tokyo writing this blog, and we have the Hara Hachibu 
tradition here in Japan of only eating until 80% full. This idea originally came from Okinawa, and they are one of the longest-lived peoples in the world. I have to break that habit driven deep into my mind by my mum and not feel compelled to eat everything on the plate. I had lunch the other day with my mate Tuck, and I noted he left most of his chicken uneaten, which was quite a feat as the main meal was chicken. Growing up in Japan, maybe he didn't have to break free of the gravitational pull of finish everything on your plate. Find out more and come back from the break. Today's show is brought to you by our public courses, but we also do custom in-house programs. We do them in Japanese and we do them in English. We do them in our super safe classroom. We do them live online. Our show today is being brought to you by on the... 5th of December, we'll be having our three-day Dale Carnegie course, and also on the 5th and 6th of December, doing a high-impact presentations course. Our website is www.dale-carnegie.co.jp. So that's www.dale-carnegie.co.jp. You can email me at greg.story at dalecunningy.com. So that's G-R-E-G dot story, S-T-O-R-Y at dalecunningy.com. If you like learning by watching videos, then we have over 2,300 there for you at Tokyo Japan Dale Carnegie TV on YouTube. We release three shows every week on YouTube. The Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. That's the premier business show in Japan every Monday, Tokyo time. Fridays, we have the Japan Business Mastery Show, and on Saturdays, we release Japan's top business interviews, where I interview leaders from SMEs right up to the corporate captains of industry on one topic, leading in Japan. Now, every second Thursday, we release the Business Pro Television Show. Don't forget to grab my business best-selling books on Japan on Amazon, Japan Sales Mastery, which is Saegyo in Japanese, Japan Business Mastery, and Japan Presentations Mastery, or in Japanese, Anata Mo Presen no Tachijin. My other books include Stop Wasting Money on Training, which in Japanese is Training de Okani o Mudin Suno wa Yami Masho. And my just released new book is Japan Leadership Mastery. And all are available on Amazon. Welcome back. Roughly once a week, over a meal with my wife, I like to drink Australian wine at home on Fridays after my hard toil at the Dale Carnegie Siberian salt mines. I used to finish a bottle between us, but actually I was drinking most of it. Today I'm down to a single glass to give my blood pressure, kidneys and liver a rest. This is extremely hard because I want to keep drinking. It was a weekly battle with myself to stop at one glass. At one point, back in the 1990s, when I was working in Nagoya, after many months of whining and dining and being whined and dined, my weight blew up to 90 kilograms. I didn't notice it because it was gradual. After one event where we were having a meal sitting on tatami, some kind soul sent me a photo from the evening. It was taken from the side so I got a full appraisal of the profile of my massive girth. I was so shocked. Today, my weight floats around 82 to 83 kilos at the moment, and I need it floating around 80, 81. And those last couple of kilos seem so hard to evaporate. For reference purposes, when I was competing in karate competitions, I was fighting in the 75 to 80 kilo weight division. So getting close to my fighting weight is a good goal for me to have. Switching off from work is a pain. I think about my problems at work all day and night, and that black monster is always sitting there in the darkened corner of my mind. Lately, I'm also adding to my woes by not getting good quality sleep. I'm not sure why that is, but I think part of it is not enough exercise. I need to be more tired at night so they can drift off to sleep quickly and smoothly. 
I was walking every morning. Then I caught a cold with the change of the seasons, so I took a break. Then I tripped on the stairs at home, smashed my toe into the stair rise, and it is a miracle I didn't fracture, but boy, has it been sore. Consequently, no walking in the morning. I need to get back to that routine of awakening at 5.50 a.m., get out the door, walk for an hour while listening to podcasts, and then get off to work. Getting to the gym regularly is a difficulty because I am often at networking events at night, but I know I can do better. What about going to the gym on the weekends? I can do better. One item you may note that is prominent by its absence is smoking and the quitting thereof. Both my parents died of lung cancer and my father at age 51, so I have never smoked. If you are a smoker, then I haven't got much to say from any personal experience. I have read that as soon as you quit, the body starts to rebuild and you can repair the damage you've been doing to your lungs and broader health. Apparently, after a year since you quit, your risk of heart disease is halved. And after five years, your chances of a stroke and cervical cancer are the same as a non-smoker. Worthwhile thinking about, I would say. Everything I've talked about today is within my grasp, if I choose to grasp it. I don't need a life coach, personal trainer, or Zempic, or anything else but will, determination, consistency, and making some decisions and sticking to them. How about you? Thank you for joining the Leadership Japan series. If you found the program useful, then tell your family, friends, and colleagues. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast. You can contact me at greg.story at dalecarnegie.com. Our website is www.dale-carnegie.com. CO.JP. Until the next episode, take what you thought valuable, put it into action because idea application is what makes winners winners. So be one of them. Remember, I'm in your corner, your go to guy for soft skills training in Tokyo, committed to your success here in Nippon. <laughs>